All right, guys, we're here back with another article. This is from WLNS.com. Um, it's in Michigan. And they've got some news about changing laws with service animals in Michigan. This is different in every state. Okay. I'm, I haven't read all this. I haven't watched the little news video over here. But from what I'm understanding already is that um, protection for service dogs and their handlers varies by state. Okay. If you are a person who already has a trained service dog, that's a different story than if you're a trainer who is raising and training a service dog in training for a person who needs it. Um, not everybody has the same rights, depending on where along that process is. Fortunately, here in the Lehigh Valley of Pennsylvania, they do protect the rights of trainers and service dogs in training. Uh, but it sounds like that's not the case that it was over in Michigan. So let's take a look. Service animal law expanding to include animal trainers. All right. Um, Lansing, Michigan. A Michigan law concerning service animals is undergoing some changes in 2023. According to Sinas Dramas attorney, Brian Waldman, the law is being expanded to allow those who train service animals to bring them into public spaces. The law was expanded because it essentially recognized or the legislator recognized that to train service animals, you have to take them out into the real world, said Waldman. Wow, what a revelation. <laughs> Really? Previously, the law primarily protected those who have registered service animals and bring them into public spaces. But what exactly is a service dog? Listen, I'm going to tell you right now, these next two paragraphs is not going to adequately educate anybody on this topic who doesn't already know what a service dog is. <laughs> let's see. But let's see. Let's give them a chance. Okay, let's give them a chance. A service animal is different than emotional support companion or therapy animal. This is true. A service animal is a dog or a miniature horse that has that's trained to do a specific task to help someone with a recognized disability. Also true. Um, I wonder if the DOTs updated their guidelines about mini horses. Uh, interesting. So a lot of the times, if, if you're someone who's allergic to dogs, a good alternative can be a miniature horse. Just, just to put that out there. Business owners will be able to ask the owner or trainer of the service dog to leave if the animal is not housebroken. The animal's out of control and the owner or trainer is not taking steps to control the animal. That's how it's always been with the ADA. Um, so good. I'm glad you know the ADA laws. Congratulations. But, uh, I mean, there was a video just the other day. Oh, I needed to cover that. I don't know if you guys saw the video. It's all over TikTok where there's this dog barking and causing a huge disturbance. And the owner claims that it's a service dog. And the manager, and this is at Walmart too, is too afraid to kick the dog out for misbehaving. Even though now you have video evidence and proof, like the ADA law covers that. Now, I still have questions about if you need video proof on that. Um, luckily, they, they do have it, but it's, it's negligence, honestly, especially if it's a dog that could be aggressive. It puts a lot of service dogs out of commission every year because these big box stores are afraid to get sued for not allowing a service dog in. But that's not what this is anymore. This is about kicking out a dog who's actually causing a disturbance. So um, there's there's a lot of problems in the U.S. about that, and I, I have some questions that I need answered <laughs> about um, how what you can do to protect yourself. Honestly, I think a GoPro is the way to go, to, to be honest. At this point in life, I, I think the way the law currently is, because the ADA is only like, what, 20, 30 years old? I think at this point, it's it's important just to have a GoPro on your dog if if you're worried about that kind of thing. All right, let's watch this article. We'll support animals. One of the laws that the legislature passed that will take effect in 2023 has to do with the training of service animals. We currently have a law in Michigan that says places that are open up to the public, like restaurants, can't discriminate against people who have service animals or, or 
ask them to leave or prevent them from coming into the public place because of the fact that they do have a service animal. And, and the law was expanded because it essentially recognized, or the legislature recognized, that to train service animals, you have to take them into the real world. And so now, now not only the owners will be uh, allowed to have the protections of this law, but also the people that train service animals. And to understand this law, it's really important to understand what is a service animal. A service animal is different than an emotional support, companion, or therapy animal. A service animal is a dog or a miniature horse that's trained to do a specific task to help someone with a recognized disability. And, and so the distinction would be, uh, you know, an emotional support animal might help calm someone who has, say, PTSD, but a, a therapy or service animal, I'm sorry, would actually be trained to do a specific task. For example, if the person was having a PTSD episode or, or maybe even anticipation of one, the, the therapy dog or animal would take that person to a safe place, actually perform a task, as opposed to just be there for emotional support or to calm the person. And the other important thing to know about this law is for business owners, you can under certain exceptions uh, or certain situation. So what this guy is saying is true, but also one of the bits of information is not quite right. I, I would want him to be a little more specific in how he says the dog calms the person because calming a person is not a task. You can alert, you can have a dog respond to an episode, um, but I can easily see how calming a person can easily become misinterpreted as emotional support, which is what an emotional support animal is for. And they're not allowed out in public, right? only in loud and uh, pet friendly areas. So I just, I wish he had worded that a little bit better. Is ask the therapy animal to leave or the owner, the trainer, the therapy. Oh no, he did it. No. He interchanged it. He interchanged service dog with therapy animal. Guys. I really question some of these lawmakers like, who is this guy? A mission. Yeah, this is the guy. This is who mentioned earlier. Uh, where is he? Waldman. Waldman, get your facts straight. I am mildly disappointed in you. Actually, I'm strongly disappointed in you because you should know the law. You work at a law firm. <laughs> the animal. If if the therapy animal is not housebroken, or if the animal is out of therapy control, therapy animal, and the owner or trainer is not taking affirmative steps to control the animal. And then people also also that it is- Also, I wanna point out, how confident does he look like he's actually talking about the subject right now? He's kind of stuttering over his words. I was just stuttering. <laughs> Maybe I have a mild form of Tourette's, I don't know. But he's like stumbling over his words. He doesn't look super confident about it. Like, I feel like they just threw this on him in the office. Like, here you go. I need to, we needed you to go talk to the news. This isn't, this isn't your case, but we have nobody else available because everybody else is on vacation. Like, this <laughs> is giving me that total vibe. It's obviously completely inappropriate to fake that it's a service animal. There are serious penalties if you do. I believe the penalty is a thousand dollar fine. The first time someone is caught faking that they're with a service animal to get the animal into a public place. And I believe it's $2,000 for the second offense. You know what? I forgot about that. Hold on. Hold on. I forgot about that. I need to Google something. Okay, I can't even spell my steroid. Pennsylvania baking service dog law. Do we even have that? 23 states. It's being laws on it. Fake dogs love protecting work dogs. Oh, disability rights PA. Um, summary offensive. What when is it a crime for a person to be denied access to a facility? No. No, it's no, I don't think it's there. Hold on. Hold on. Oh, wait. Sorry guys. There you go. You guys might want to. There you go. You might want to see that. 
Wait, we got we got we gotta find in the page. No. Pencil thing is not on here. Are you shitting me? Fake service dog animal laws by state. New Jersey? You're right next door. What about New York? New York is? What the frick, Pennsylvania? Holy cannoli! All right, I am not impressed. All right, good to know. Good to know. No fines. Anyways, this leads me on to the next topic. Now that we know that information, George Santos has been accused of fraud for scamming a veteran out of cancer treatment for his dog. And it was back in 2016, 2017. Well, we'll get into it. They'll tell us in the article. I don't remember exactly what year, but I'm like, if it's true, Let's watch. Wait, there, there we go. Now we can watch. This is from NBC. Calling out embattled Congressman George Santos. He should be ashamed of himself, but he doesn't have shame. He does. He's a psychopath. Richard Ossoff claims Cold Santos plane. helped to raise thousands of dollars for a cancer treatment for his therapy dog and then never came through with the cash. Then again, the more I research and look into different personality disorders, it's not uncommon um for people seeking high levels of power to be narcissistic psychopathic lack emotion lack um as this veteran is saying shame so and listen i did i i feel so skeeved out for voting for people that i do not know on a personal level for that exact reason just just saying I was so livid that I realized that this guy is now a serving congressman. He doesn't deserve that job. The dog, Sapphire, never received the treatment and later died. Santos did not respond to NBC News, but told Semaphore the story is not true. This accusation comes at the same time as a new revelation contradicts a major claim by Santos that his mother was, quote, in her office in the South Tower on September 11th. But genealogist also, Alex Kazalrith acquired immigration records from Fatima Devolder and shared those with NBC that showed she applied it's for a visa in 2003, which stated she had not been in the time. U.S. since 1999. Right now, Santos faces five possible investigations. The voters of his district have elected him. He is seated. He is part of the Republican conference. Santos is now freshly seated both on the House Small Business Committee and the Science, Space and Technology Committee and will continue to serve in Congress, despite calls from fellow New York members to step down. I don't think there's any way he could possibly uh, perform his duty. And despite this new round of accusations, really Santos still refuses Sunday. to engage in even basic questions about the inconsistencies in his background. He has admitted that he's embellished his resume, but claims he is not a fraud. Those are some strong allegations. There's another news piece here. Hey, sir, how can I help you? Um, I'll have to read on the screen for you, but uh, there's some more information. Congressman Santos, will you resign? I will not. Is that representative or Republican? I think, I don't know. I'll, I'll read it as representative. I don't know. I don't know these things. I'm a dog trainer. What do you want from me? Representative George Santos allegedly conned a disabled homeless veteran resulting in the death of his beloved service dog. Will you step down? I'm actually going to step down. A new report from the patch says that the veteran, Richard Ostoff, met the disgraced representative. Ah, wait, there was a time uh, in 2016. Hold on. I can't read that fast. I mean, I can read it, but like reading and saying is different. Um, while he was going through a tough time in his life and living with his dog, Sapphire, in a tent on the side of a New Jersey road. Sadly, Sapphire was suffering from a life-threatening stomach tumor, which would cost $3,000 to remove. And that's huge. Like, did you see that tumor? Do you see that? That's when Santos, who introduced himself as Anthony 
Devolder and claimed to run a pet charity came into Soft's life. I want to know what Santos was doing in 2016. I feel like this requires more investigation. Santos allegedly raised the funds for the dog surgery on GoFundMe, but then shut it down and disappeared once the goal was met. The Navy vet, now 47, never saw a penny of the donations and his beloved service dog died on January 15, 2017. According to a reported text exchange, Santos claimed that he instead donated $3,000 to other dogs in need. Again, we don't know. This is all alleged. We don't know if he was using that phone number at the time to text. Okay. We don't even know if this is the same person for sure, but there definitely needs to be some investigation. And there you go from the New York Post. All right, guys, that is it. I'm going to have to wrap this up. Thank you so much for joining me. Um, Good news, bad news, conflicting news, all the news about service dogs here at Caitlin's Animal Training. Um, please, if you haven't already, check me out on my socials. Um, I put a lot of work and effort into my TikTok these days, but you also follow me on Instagram, Facebook. All the handles are at Caitlin's Animals, and that's my reminder for a client meeting. I will see you guys later. Thank you so much for joining, and um, have a great rest of your week, guys.